Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the Serie A review. Probably you're wondering why is it so empty up there? Well, Super League. I decided as a silent protest I'm gonna leave the teams that brought upon us the Super League. I'm gonna leave them out and leave their spots empty. Wait for the Premier League where yeah it will be a whole lot more empty uh, there and let's see how we will do for uh, the other review video. If you want to hear my thoughts on the Super League, I have a link up there. If you haven't seen it, as I said, I am still. Let's wait and see. I decided, well, let's give Cagliari some love, and uh, I think they had a great win. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but in general, speaking of Super League, um, for my favorite team, still fav favorite team, although I am <laughs> disowning them at this very video, in this very video, uh, Milan had a Super Week. Not only did they announce it, they will be part of the Super League, which of course they, want, they don't want to miss out. And I, while I exonerated them a teeny bit in my video, it's, it's still, uh, Milan is very much at the root of the whole thing, going all the way back to the 90s uh, of creating such Sarasarach League, so there are no in innocents. But they had really a super weekend because they got, with a lot of work, they got the win that they desperately needed, and then they... Um, most of the results fell a little bit their way. They have a little bit more breathing room. It's not over yet. A little bit more breathing room. SOS Juve though, and definitely SOS Roma. Uh, those two, Juve might just sneak into the Champions League, but you know, who cares? Who cares at this moment? Well, Roma looks uh, squarely out of, out of it. And then, yeah, um, we had a big game between Inter and Napoli that ended in a draw. So Inter, Inter's winning streak is snapped. I think 11 game winning streak that that they had, that they had, they had snapped. So yeah, and then we had a few really, really, really crazy results. Uh, a seven goal game and an eight goal game, yeah. Italian football is defensive. I owe you from last week, um, the uh, the Monday evening game where Sassuolo won at Benevento, which uh, the only thing that changed really is that Sassuolo went ahead of uh, Hellas Verona. I still, the changes that I referred to in this table are to the previous match day, which was match day 2029, just FYI. Let's go into the weekend. I mean, I have not seen anything of the first three games, although I have had to say Sampdoria, Hellas, the 3-1 win, and Sassuolo, uh, Fiorina, also 3-1 win. Those are, are, are interesting really results, but uh, we got to start with Cagliari against Parma. Uh, this was basically, this game needed a winner that whoever wins this one will still have a fighting chance to avoid the drop. Not a big one, but a fighting chance. Whereas uh, the other one is more or less re relegated. It started out well for Parma. Parma got uh, their goal in the fifth and then the 31st, even Kuczko makes it 2-0. However, Pavoletti just before the halftime, 1-2 game a little bit on, although Parma largely controlled the first half. And then you also thought that uh, Mann, when he scored in the 59th, game over. 3-1 Parma, Parma is living for another day. No, again, within a few minutes, uh, Marin, and those were two actually Romanians that scored, uh, pulls one back uh, and it goes even crazier because uh, in stoppage time, uh, Pereiro gets the equalizer, which is a the result that would have helped absolutely no one. And so we get a winner, Pereiro assisting Cherry, who makes it 4-3 in the 94th minute. An absolute crazy nuts ending to a pretty good game, one has to say. Um, uh, as I already knew, Milan against Genoa. I think Milan did deserve the win over, over on the goal by Rebic, uh, where, you know, after a free kick, Kalulu plays it back to Rebic, who really just takes it directly in, in, in internet from almost a surprising angle, was pretty, pretty good. They had then a few more chances, uh, namely for one where, yeah, Leao is just far, far falling over. He definitely needs to do better there. Um, and, and so it comes as it comes. I mean, both halves, Milan starting strong, and then falling a little bit back. And uh, this time they fall back and after side corner. They completely forget about Destro. And this was probably the first real uh, defensive mistake that um, Tomori made in a Milan jersey. Second half. Uh, Milan should have made, should have ended the game there and then. First, Rebic is missing uh, in a 
wonderful position. Uh, Schulz it all, all over the bar, then Kier heads it next to the bar, uh, but then a little bit later, um, a corner comes in and Skamaka, the striker for Genoa, makes an own goal. I mean, they showed Mandzukic, but Man Mandzukic basically touched the ball and then hits Skamaka's back and it goes in. Um, Milan pressing a little bit more, I think it was a good shot by Jar Jar Nogl, but you could see that um, they got a little, little bit nervous and uh, there were a few good chances for uh, Geno in there. Most, uh, most no, 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 after Donnarumma dropped the ball, um, two goal line clearances, but Milan hangs on and I knew that this is a super important win. Not only is Genoa a really hard opponent to play, but if you want to get in the Champions League, and again, who cares at this moment? I'm still uh, naively, you know, I'm still staying in the old sense. Yeah, we want to get in the Champions League. Um, let's see, let's see. Um, but I knew, assuming that there will be a Champions League sports as place, this was at stake. This was a really, really, really important win, which was also a really, really important win for Atalanta. Boy, this was an intense game. Uh, it was entertaining. It was up and down. I thought that Juve, especially in first half, a little bit more of the game, but At 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 Atalanta was always dangerous on hitting them on the counter. Um, the biggest chance to me fell. Uh, I mean, Pessina had had one very. I, I don't know what 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 was doing. If he shoots straight, I think he might make make go, and then he takes he carries the ball and shoots it. But there was was another one for for Juve where um, Golini drops the ball. Um, and then Chiesa, no, or, or, or Chiesa um, wrestles the ball from the defender um, and it goes to Morata, who has, at least in TV, a clear shooting chance, but he carries the ball, then lobs it over the keeper and it is saved by Mele, which I have to honestly say, I would have expected him to take a shot almost immediately. It, I mean, in the review, it looks all right what... Um, Morata is doing, but I think from the TV pictures you really feel why is no one shooting from you? But the goal is there's a gaping open goal. No, no one's doing it. In the second half, again, I think you were initially uh, just this tad bit better, but at, 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 uh, giving them a lot of counter. And uh, Chiesa comes then off injured, which is probably the breaking point a little bit in that game. Uh, that was in the 58th minute. From that minute on, uh, from that moment on, then Muriel and Mele came off, and Ilicic and Malinowski came on, and Gasparini really, really using the depth of his bench, which is unbelievable to say that uh, Atalanta is using their depth against Juventus. Just let that sink in for a little bit. Um, and so, yeah, uh, Freaky from Malinowski, far out. <laughs> it's just saved by Chesney, uh, but from the ensuing corner, uh, the Atalanta keeps the ball, Ilicic plays it to Malinowski, who shoots, hits uh, Alexandro on the fists and is deflected in the internet and Atalanta get a huge win. And just uh, at that time when we didn't know any, anything, it seemed like you is in real trouble of making the Champions League and Atalanta will finish uh, top four. We gotta talk about Lazio Benevento, fortunately a game where no Super League teams are in there. Uh, that was such a crazy game. I mean, um, I actually in hindsight, yes, of course, I was always going to watch Atalanta Juve. But in hindsight, uh, this could have been the Inzaghi duel, but um, uh, Simone has COVID, so that didn't happen. It's crazy weather, especially second half, a deluge coming down. Uh, we had goals, 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 but not only that, we had goals. We had uh, missed penalties, we had goals not given, we had four VAR uh, in, in intervention. It was an absolutely crazy game. And you thought at the 36th minute when it was 3-0 Lazio that the game was done and dusted. No, it was absolutely not. Uh, Immobile already hit the post in the third, third minute. De Pauli, uh, on goal, gives them the lead. Immobile then scores his second. Correa converts a penalty. And then late, just before the half, the Benevento pulls one back and maybe that gave them a little, a little bit of like a life. However, uh, another on goal. I mean, two on goals, two on goals gives Lazio a 4-1 lead. Immobilis penalty in the 55th is saved. That was a var, 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 var decision. However, Viola's penalty, just uh, seven minutes later, is converted in the 62nd. And then in the 66th, at that point, it is 4-2. Uh, 
uh, Benevento scores a goal. However, is this, is this allowed because of a push? Uh, otherwise, Labrador would have made it 4-3 and the game would have been fully on. It still was fully on because Glick in the 85th makes it 4-3. And then they were pushing everything forward and uh, Parolo and Immobile then keep running and they're the only, only ones running in the rain and Immobile makes it 5-3. What an absolutely crazy game. Uh, this is, if you need an advertisement of A, how great Serie A is and how great any league is without super clubs in there, that is a game that you should watch. Absolute wonderful game. Uh, more of that. Yeah, maybe, you know, the tell of me more is a little bit great defending uh, plus a spectacle. The other Roman team had a perfect start. Pedro plays it to Mayoral, 1 0 Roma. And that was everything that come, came, came from Roma, because from that moment on, I think Torino uh, really controlled the game and more or less should have already equals before halftime. But just when you thought that Roma got a little bit of great grip of the game, Sanabria after an Ansaldi cross had, had it in. It's 1-1 one, one, and that gives now second win into Torino's sales. Uh, who then uh, get the lead through Zaza in the 71st and very late on, the Belotti assist Rincon makes it 3-1. Huge win for Torino. Bad result for Roma, who might uh, definitely not finish top top four unless they win the Europa League. And then the big one between Napoli and Inter. I mean, first of all, I saw the jerseys uh, the Nap Na Napoli was wearing. Um, I assumed one will be a goalkeeper jersey. I thought the goalkeeper jersey will, will be the black one. I think I could have lived with Napoli because they had yellow away jerseys if Napoli played in that one. Those black jerseys have nothing to do with Napoli. Why turquoise? Make them at least light blue. Yes, it's a cash grab, but in times of these, uh, it's a minor cash grab. So, uh, you know, other teams want billions of dollars uh, to make their own league. Um, I really think, I mean, the idea is nice. I am not so, I mean, they already have released four jer jerseys, of, although two of these are rather qu qu questionable. So, I mean, with, with the Maradona jersey, it should have been done. Okay, we know the fashion, blah, blah, blah. We always have these kids with fashion. At least Napoli is wearing them to a game. I, I, you know, I hate nothing more. I think the Inter fourth kit will not be worn in, in, in the game. And this was, uh, yes, it was the perfect opportunity. Let's have two crazy kids play against her. No, we, we, we get two of the, uh, of the crazier ones. I don't like, I don't mind the bird design. It just looked not Napoli like in any way. That was my main problem with that one. The game itself, Inter in the first half hit twice the woodwork and they score an own goal. I mean, an insignia cross that Andanovic takes. Both started right at the foot of the fry. I, I, what a crazy own goal that was. Uh, Lukaku twice hit the woodwork, as I said, once the bar, once the post. Um, and Inter probably was largely the better team in the first half. Second half, they um, get the equalizer when uh, uh, you thought that the um, um, attack is cleared, but it falls to Eriksen, who from a distant 55th puts it in the internet to make it. 1-1, one, one. but then it was more Napoli, where uh, especially um, Politano was really, really good uh, up front uh, and wanted want to shine against his former teammates. A penalty was later on the first given, but the fry clearly played, played the ball, and so it was taken off, and it ends 1-1, one, one. Inter's winning streak snapped. What this means in the table now is... And you know, I still have this is for Champions League, like, so let's say top four. Let's look at Champions. Let's say for top top four. Inter now only nine points. Maybe there's a chance. No, there is no Inter. The new new in the Champions Milan really makes a jump. I mean, uh, they remain two ahead of Atalanta, but now they're four over Juve and six over Napoli. That could be big. Uh, a note that Lazio has a game in hand if they win that one, and that game is against Torino should be a win, then Lazio would be right ahead of Na Na Napoli, right in the thick of the champion of the top four race. Let's call it top four race. So, um, while Milan and Atalanta at the moment look pretty, Juve, Napoli, Lazio, let's see. And there's many, many games to be played. I'm not, with Milan, I'm not secure yet. I don't feel secure at all. Although this was a big win that they, 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 they have a big game come, coming up, as we'll see. 
on the bottom, uh, Calgary, as I said, has a chance, but it's still five points to Benevento. And Benevento has been falling. Torino looks kind of safe at the moment. And Fiorentina just hanging about there. But um, those teams are too good. It's really, if, uh, can Benevento have a fall and will Calgary catch them? We got to see. Um, in the expected standings, as we see, it's Cali, Parma, uh, Crotone going down. Uh, top four, you see kind of the bad land. Atalanta ahead of Milan at the moment. Still definitely more into the top four spots, whereas the other, there's a little bit tighter. Lazio, thanks to a lower rating, is probably more or less uh, fixed on this uh, sixth spot at the, at the moment with Roma uh, pretty much settled on the seventh. We have two rounds. We have a midweek round, and I don't know yet if I will make a dedicated video on that one or not. Um, Verona Fiorentina is a great kickoff, I have to say, uh, but uh, Milan Sassuolo is one game that is rather tricky. Um, I'm also curious if Spezia can do something against Inter. Of course, the two big ones are on the bottom. The Vestri will play on Thursday. It's Roma against Atalanta and Napoli against Lazio, and especially Napoli against Lazio. That is, could very well uh, decide if anyone has a chance of this finishing top four. And Lazio has another huge game on next Monday against Milan. Um, but we also see that the other teams that are in the fight, Inter has a uh, nasty game against Verona, Fiorentina, Juve, never foregone conclusion, uh, especially if Fiorentina gives their all against these teams uh, in Napoli at, at Torino. With Torino, you know, slowly uh, getting themselves out of trouble. Uh, kind of interesting what's happening there too. So that's my few cents on what's happening in Serie A this weekend. Um, yeah, I'm glad we can still talk about Barta Leagues, but I see I have to adjust my vocabulary at this moment a little bit and call it top four and not Champions League spots because who knows what will happen. And I will keep you updated on that. In any case, let me know what you thought about the Serie A games uh, this weekend, how you think the top four and the bottom three will end up. Um, and yeah, any general comments there, you will like, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye!